On today's show, NHTSA wants regulations that can change with autonomous technology. Tesla faces accusations of trying to cover up a defect, and we drive the new Volvo S90. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the automotive industry. Yesterday, we reported on how Mark Rosekind, the administrator at NHTSA, says he wants Congress to help change regulations to speed up adoption of autonomous cars. But he also recognizes that NHTSA itself can take years to write new regulations, and he wants the agency to change as well. In an exclusive interview, Rosekind laid out the kind of changes he would like to see. If we just regulate, it's not going to work. You know, it takes us eight years to get regulation through. And I, and I, I was just here saying, you know, you're on version 238.32 of whatever it is you're trying to invent by the time the regulation comes out. So we need probably a hybrid, nimble, flexible, something that's continually being iterated, changed, and evolving, along with some regulatory structure to make sure there are some requirements. What that's going to look like, I think we're going to have to develop literally for this need. You know, it's amazing that it takes eight years to write regulations. That's two presidential terms. But it sure is encouraging to hear a regulator talk about the need for flexible regulations. I guess hell has frozen over. And speaking of NHTSA, the agency is investigating the Tesla Model S over a possible suspension defect. It was first reported by the Daily Kanban, which cited an owner on a Tesla blog site who said Tesla agreed to pay for fixing his car if he kept it confidential. Now that kind of suggests the company did not want the problem reported to NHTSA. Tesla denies that it has a defect or that it dis- discouraged owners from reporting anything to NHTSA. Meanwhile, the agency says it's investigating both of those issues. Still to come, our first driving impressions of the new Volvo S and the V90. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. Ford is carving out a nice little niche for itself with its sport models. Explorer sales were up over 20% between 2013 and 2015, but the Explorer Sport jumped 103%. And during that same time frame, the Edge Sport was up 62%. So now Ford's getting ready to unleash the all-new Fusion Sport. It gets a 2.7-liter EcoBoost V6 that pumps out 325 horsepower and 380 foot-pounds of torque. And it comes standard with all-wheel drive. All that for a little over $33,000. That's a lot of power for that price. And it sure is fascinating to watch how the public is so receptive to buying models that offer more performance. Sean was in Spain this week for the global media launch of the new Volvo S90 and V90. And here is what he has to say about them. Volvo is really stepping up its game. We believe it's moving up scale to make room for Geely to step in below it. Not only is Volvo doing it with exquisite styling, but also in the way its vehicles drive. I got some seat time in the all-new versions of the S90 sedan and V90 wagon and came away rather impressed. Both vehicles ride on the automaker's new Scalable Product Architecture, or SPA, which has helped the XC90 earn praise from nearly every corner of the automotive industry. I drove fully loaded versions with all-wheel drive and the same turbocharged and supercharged four-cylinder engine you can get in the XC90. The cars tackle everyday driving extremely well. I was pleasantly surprised how well they took bumps with 20-inch wheels. We did get versions with optional rear air suspension. The base model comes with hydraulic shocks and a transverse composite rear leaf spring, like a Corvette. The base car also comes as front wheel drive, so it's not going to handle like its rear wheel drive counterparts, but with all wheel drive and the dynamic driving mode selected, the S&V plant the rubber to the road 
rather well during more spirited driving. Inside, you'll notice a similar, simplistic layout to the XC90 with the same center touchscreen, but it has been updated for faster reaction and better resolution. The cars also get Volvo's second generation Pilot Assist feature, which is the automaker's semi-autonomous driving technology. The first gen only worked in low speed city situations, but it can now function on the highway as well at speeds up to 80 miles per hour and no longer requires a leader vehicle to function. The S90 sedan will start hitting dealer showrooms later this month with a starting price a little under $48,000. No word on pricing or on sale date for the V90 just yet. Thanks for that report, Sean. Coming up next, the U.S. Post Office is out to celebrate some of the most iconic pickup trucks. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. It was only last year that analysts were wondering if truckmaker Navistar could even survive. But the company's starting to look a lot healthier. Earlier this week, it surprised analysts with a net profit. And now it just signed a manufacturing deal with General Motors. Starting next year, Navistar will build cutaway versions of GM's G-Vans, the Chevy Express and GMC Savannah at its plant in Springfield, Ohio. These cab chassis cutaways can be upfitted into service vehicles, ambulances, and even shuttle buses. You know, this is the second tie-up between the two companies. Last year, they agreed to develop and build medium-duty, conventional cab, class four and five commercial vehicles. The partnership with GM should not be too surprising. Navistar's top officers include two former General Motors executives. Even though most of us rarely lick a stamp to mail a letter anymore, postage stamps can be an art form all in their own. So maybe some of you will be interested in these stamps. The U.S. Post Office is going to release four stamps depicting iconic pickup trucks. The 1938 International Harvester D2, the 1948 Ford F1, the 1953 Chevrolet, and the 1965 Ford F100. Artist Chris Lyons of Pittsburgh, New York, created the stylized renderings of the trucks, and art director Antonio Alcala of Alexandria, Virginia, designed the stamps. They're going to be released to the public on July 15th. And with that, we wrap up this week's reports. Thanks for watching, and remember, we'll be back here next week bringing you some of the most interesting news in the global automotive industry. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.